I've been explaining to you about the five bhao that we can use in order to remove this feeling of God being God and thus very distant from us. Shant bhao, dasya bhao, sakya bhao, vatsalya bhao, and madhurya bhao. So I explained to you that each one of these is progressively closer. Each one of these is progressively or provides progressively more intimacy with Bhagwan. And in this relationship, the devotee forgets that he's merely a soul and God also forgets that he's God. Not only in our meditation, but also after God realization, the devotee receives this relationship with God in the divine world. I also explained to you that there are different levels of divine love, the topmost power of God, this power that makes him forget that he is God and makes the devotee forget that it, they are mere souls. This prema bhakti has different levels and depending which of these relationships we adopt with Shri Krishna, we will attain to one of these levels. The one who worships with Shant Bhao, however, does not reach to the level of Premanand. They only reach to Vaikunt Abode, where they receive the divine vision of God's almighty form. But those who adopt the higher four Bhao, they reach this field of divine love. The one who worships with Dasya Bhao reaches to the first level, Prema Bhakti, the one who worships with Sakya Bhav reaches up to the fifth level, Raga Bhakti. The one who worships with Vatsalya Bhav reaches up to the sixth level, Anurag Bhakti. However, only the one who worships with Madhurya Bhav reaches up to the top two levels of Bhavavesh Bhakti and Mahabhav Bhakti. However, I also explained to you that even within Madhurya Bhav, there are three different levels. And in fact, the first level, because in this first level called Sadharani Rati Madhurya Bhav, the devotee loves God, not for any worldly reason, only to receive the divine association of Shri Krishna, yet there is no regard for Shri Krishna's happiness. The devotee is only thinking that when I get to meet Shri Krishna, then I will be happy. I will receive so much divine bliss from being with Shri Krishna. Since the focus is only on one's own happiness, this Sadharanirati Madhuri Bhav devotee only reaches up to the first level, Prema Bhakti. The next level within Madhurya Bhav, Samanjasarati, they have some regard for Bhagwan's pleasure, happiness, and some regard for their own. Thus, they reach to a higher level. They reach all the way up to Anurag Bhakti, the sixth level in these stages of divine bliss. However, the one who worships with Samartharati Madhurya Bhav, who only thinks of Shri Krishna's happiness in every situation, because this devotee has been completely selfless, they actually reach to the highest level up to Bhavavesh Bhakti and even Mahabhav Bhakti, the topmost level within this area of Premanand. I told you a Leela yesterday which happened when Shri Krishna illustrated this difference to the queens of Dwarika who are a part of this middle level of Madhurya Bhav, the Samanjasarati level, by enacting such a Leela where only a completely selfless devotee would have been able to give their foot dust to Shri Krishna to cure him of his stomach ache. And out of all the saints, only the gopis were willing to do that because they belong to the 
purely selfless class of devotees called Samartharati Madhurya Bhav. I also explained to you, or I just briefly mentioned, that once Naradji came back with the foot dust of the gopis and cured Sri Krishna's stomach ache with that, and the queens heard that, oh, the gopis of Braj were the ones who gave their foot dust? without any regard for what may happen to them in the future, getting a bad name or going down in history as the ones who gave their foot dust to Sri Krishna. So the queens now had some appreciation for the greatness of those gopis. So they had a desire to meet the gopis and Radharani. So it so happened <clears throat> that after 100 years, meaning 100 years after Sri Krishna had left Braj, when he was still in Dwarika at that time, he was still on the earth planet, there was a great gathering in Kurukshetra. And everybody, the whole Yadu clan, went and joined in this celebration. So everyone from Dwarika went and many people from Braj went as well. So Radha and the gopis and all of Krishna's family from, from Braj, they all went and everybody from Dwarika went and they all set up camp there in Kurukshetra. So everybody had big, big tents that each individual family unit was staying in. And there in Kurukshetra, the queens got a chance to meet Radha and the gopis for the first time. So, they were down at the river. They were bathing and uh, doing some formalities, worshipping formalities, and they happened to meet. So they invited Radha and the gopis back to their tent. Rukmini and the other queens invited Radha and the gopis back to their tent. Please come. We would be honored to have you as our guest if you would just come and visit. So they did. Radha and the gopis went and as they were invited. And while they were there, they offered them some things and they actually offered Radha some milk to drink. So they had warmed that milk they had actually boiled it and it was a little too hot to drink so but Radha being very humble being very nice just drank the milk without saying anything then they went on their way and at the end of that day's program then everybody was of course getting ready for bed and that night when Rukmini was pressing Shri Krishna's feet, he was actually, he had gone to sleep and she was pressing his feet. She noticed there's some blisters on the soles of Shri Krishna's feet and they were like bubbled up blisters. So she said to someone else, look at this, one of the other queens, what happened here? Created like a whole big scene there in their encampment, everybody talking, oh, what? look at Krishna's feet, what happened to his feet? It was enough of a commotion that it actually woke up Shri Krishna. And he says, what, what happened? What's going on? They said, uh, Priyatam, you have these big blisters on your feet, what happened to you? So Shri Krishna smiled and he said, you know you gave Radha that milk to drink today. Shri Radhika Ya Hridaya Arvinde Padarvindam Hivirajate Me Adyoshna Dugdha Pratipana Tongra Butchala Kaste Mama Prochalanti. This whole Leela is told in Garg Sanghita. That's where this shloka is from. Gargacharya was Sri Krishna's family guru in Braj. So he has also revealed many secrets about Radha and Krishna's Leelas. 
So he's quoting Shri Krishna here as Shri Krishna answered the queens. He said, you gave Radharani that milk to drink, which was too hot actually. It was still boiling hot. So in fact, my feet are always in Radha's heart. She keeps my charan in her heart all the time. So when she drank that milk that was too hot, that gave me blisters on my feet. All the queens were again humbled in realizing the devotion that Radharani has in her heart. But one should not think that Radha is a devotee of Shri Krishna. She is, but Shri Krishna is also a devotee of Radha. Krishnena aradhyate iti Radha. The name Radha means the one who is worshipped by Shri Krishna. So Radha is not a devotee like we are or a devotee like great saints like Mirabai were of Shri Krishna. We are all souls. Even Mirabai was a soul, albeit a God-realized soul, whereas we are Maya Bad souls. But even after God-realization, a soul is still a soul. Radha is not a soul. She is Shri Krishna herself. Remember, I explained to you these levels, eight levels of Prem. Prema Bhakti, Sneha Bhakti, Maan Bhakti, Pranay Bhakti, Rag Bhakti, Anurag Bhakti, Bhavavesh Bhakti, and Mahabhav Bhakti. So that Mahabhav Bhakti is the highest state of divine love which is only reached by those gopis those samarthārati madhuryabhāv devotees, of which the only example is the gopis, they reach up to that mahābhāv level. However, it is said by Chaitanya Mahāprabhuji, premer paramasār sehi mahābhāv jāni. Okay, the absolute essence of prem is that mahābhāv. But, Sei Mahabhava Rupa Radha Thakurani. Who is that Mahabhav? That is Radha. So it means that Radha is the personified essence of the divine love power, which is the topmost power of Bhagwan. So Radha and Krishna are absolutely one. Tasya Shaktayastvane Kadha Ahladini Sandhini Gyani Cha Kriyadya Bahuvidha Shaktaya Taswahladini Variyasi Paramantaranga Bhuta Radha Krishnena Aradhyate Iti Radha Radhiko Panishad says that out of all of God's powers, this power of divine love is supreme. However, the Paramantaranga Bhuta, the absolute highest state of that divine love, or the absolute quintessence of that divine love, Paramantaranga Bhuta Radha, that is Radharani. So we understand that Radha and Krishna are actually one and the same. Ye yam radha yascha krishno rasabdhir dehe naika krida nartham dvidha bhut. Whatever is radha, the same as Krishna, says Radhiko Panishat. Whatever is Krishna, the same as radha. They are one and the same, but they've taken two forms in order to do leelas. They're not two, they're one. But they appear as two in order to do leelas. Leelas means a divine revelation of that premanand. For instance, if Radha and Krishna did not exist in two forms, how could they do a leela like this? Radharani is talking to Lalita Sakhi. She says, Ekasya shrutameva lumpati matim. 
कृष्णेति कृष्णेनाक्षर सान्द्रोन्मादरंपरा मुपनय वंशी कल शी सज ओ ललिता सच अ टेरेबल थिंग आई एम सो एम्बेस्ड वाय वट हज हेपन शी सज कष्ट दिक्पुरुषत्रतिरभून मे मृति श्रेयसी ओ ललिता लेट मी टेल यू वट हेपन जस्ट टुडे आई हर्ड द नेम कृष्ण नव इन दिस लीला राधा एंड कृष्ण हव नॉट इवन मेट यट ऑल दो दे रिटर्नली वन इन द सेम yet in this leela and there are many such leelas of radha krishna where they meet for the first time because they've had uncountable avatar on this earth so in this leela they haven't met and radha is saying i heard the name krishna today and the moment i heard that name i fell in love with whose ever name that is later in the day i heard somebody playing on their flute and as soon as i heard the sound of that flute i fell in love with whoever was playing that flute and then later in the day someone showed me a picture of a beautiful blue dark complexion boy and when i saw that picture i fell in love with him so lalita what are people going to say i've fallen in love with three different people who does such a thing it's so embarrassing i'll give my myself and my whole family a bad name lalita is just smiling radha says what's funny this is not a laughing matter as far as i'm concerned this is terrible lalita says oh radhe you are so naive so innocent that name krishna that boy you saw in the picture that's his name and he's the same very one who is playing on the flute so such leelas show the oneness between radha and krishna but also give us reason to understand why do radha and krishna exist in two separate forms so that they can do such leelas and reveal the secrets of this premanand and reveal the experience of that both for each other and for all of the god realized saints and then as well for us that we can hear such a leela and remember it lovingly and thereby further attach our mind and purify it attach our mind to radha krishna i told you yesterday that these gopis have reached the top most position of all the devotees they've reached that mahabhav state yet keep in mind radha is the mahabhav gopis have reached into part of it madanoyam parat parah rajate ladini saro radha mevaya sada it's explained that radha rani is even within mahabhav there are actually different states so the topmost state is called madanakya mahabhav that madanakya mahabhav is radha rani's reserved seat no one reaches there no gopi not even krishna in fact but nonetheless the gopis do get to taste that mahabhav ras which is the topmost state of the divine bliss within this state of mahabhav there are waves which keep coming and going waves of milan and viraha milan means when you meet with shri krishna and the excitement and the bliss that is experienced in that meeting and viraha means when you're separated from shri krishna although after god realization there's no separation in the way that we have now that we're not even experiencing shri krishna 
that separation is different that viraha is different the two keep changing viraha to milan milan to viraha just like in the maharas lila which i was explaining to you briefly yesterday when after beginning the maharas lila shri krishna and radharani vanished from the midst of the gopis and the gopis were in tremendous longing experiencing tremendous viraha to meet shri krishna again so after they sang gopi geet in humble prayer to shri krishna that he should please come to them then shri krishna came back krishna and radharani returned so the gopis before maharas resumed they had a question for krishna they said you know there are three kinds of people in the world there are those who love when they're being loved meaning someone else loves you so you love them in return kind of like a trade or like a business then there are those who will love even when they're not receiving love in return like a mother and a father with a very young child that newborn child doesn't even recognize who is my mother who is my father doesn't know what love is can't return love yet the mother and father still love that child so this is a second kind of person those who love even without being loved in return and then there's a third type of person for them it doesn't matter you can love them or you can not love them but they're not going to love anybody <laughs> so our question to you shri krishna which of these categories do you come in are you someone who loves those who love them are you someone who will love even if they're not being loved or or do you just not love anybody so Shri Krishna answered, I don't come in any of these categories. I have my own category. Naham tu sakhyo bhajato pijantu bhajam yamisha manuvritti vrittaye yatha dhano labdha dhane vinashte tat chintayan Bhagavatam. Shri Krishna says, I love from the inside, but I behave differently on the outside. From the inside, I have great attachment to all of you gopis. I love you very much. However, from the outside, sometimes I give you viraha, I disappear or I behave seemingly indifferently to you. Why is it so? Think of a piece of gold. How do you remove all the impurities from that piece of gold? Put it in the fire. The hotter the fire is, the faster that gold's going to purify. And eventually all of the impurities are burnt from that gold. The same thing happens in Viraha for Shri Krishna. There's a fire of longing, virahagni. That fire of longing for Shri Krishna burns all the impurities of one's heart and makes one qualified to receive that mahabhav state. So Shri Krishna replied to them that it is to get you to that state, to give you this highest state of prem ras that I also have to give you viraha. But the viraha is also enjoy enjoyable. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ji says, Sangam viraha vikalpe varamiha viraho na sangamas tasmat sange sa iha Tribhuvanam apitanmayam virahe. In Milan, you see your beloved Krishna only at one place. 
when he vanishes, then in viraha, the whole world, every particle of this world becomes the form of Shri Krishna. So this state of viraha is actually considered to be a higher state than the state of Milan. In that viraha, you reach to a higher level of that prem ras. This is beyond our current experience, but we can simply understand that these are divine states which if we worship with samarthārati madhurya bhāo, emulating the gopis, then we can also reach to that state one day. And to reach to that state, to emulate those gopis, we have to try to develop that kind of selfless love, that kind of nishkam bhakti, that the gopis had for Shri Krishna and in fact they are the only example of such a high state of Nishkam Prem. You see, even when Shri Krishna left Braj, leaving the gopis for good for a hundred years until they met again in Kurukshetra, the gopis maintained a perfect state of selfless love for Shri Krishna. I'll give you another example from Premras Madira, the 1008 Padkirtan written by Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. Here's another example of a song from Viraha Madhuri. This time it's the gopis who are talking to Uddhav. And they're saying, Uddhav, when you go back to Madhav, when you go back and see Shri Krishna, you're going to tell him, obviously, about us because Uddhav was sent by Shri Krishna to talk to the gopis, to console them. In fact, Shri Krishna used this reason to get Uddhav to go and meet the gopis. Uddhav was a jnani saint, so he was absorbed in bliss of formless God. Shri Krishna thought, He's only going to get moksha, and he's my personal friend. It would be better if he got some state of premanand. Why don't I send him to the gopis and he can learn from them? So he gave this reason to Uddhav that why don't you go and console the gopis? They're missing me very much. So go and console them and maybe teach them about meditating on formless God who is omnipresent and then they'll forget about me and they won't miss me so much. This was the, a little trick he played on Uddhav. So Uddhav went with this in mind that he was going to teach the gopis but when he arrived and he saw the heightened state of Prem that the gopis had achieved, he humbled himself in front of the gopis and made them his guru and then with their grace he achieved a higher state than what he was going to get. He, he attained a state of premanand. So the gopis are telling Uddhav because he's asking, what should I tell Shri Krishna when I go back about you? So this is their reply to him. Kahiyo shamal gata Udho kahiyo shamal gat. Tell our dark complexioned beloved Sham Sundar. Brajvasin ki dasha batayehu. Jas dekhat tas taat udho. Well, you will have to tell him what you're seeing here, which is that we're all in a state of viraha for him. The gopis externally were showing a great state of longing for Shri Krishna. Just, you could say, crying tears constantly to meet him. They could think of nothing else day and night. 
So they're telling Udho, you'll have to tell him what you've seen here, but don't just leave it at that. Tell him something more as well. Puni imikahyo sham binu yadhyapi tal phati din raat udho kahiyo sham lagat udho so udho you can also tell him that we're missing him day and night talapati means like a fish out of water how restless is that fish that is our state without the vision of our beloved Shri Krishna. But, Pe na ka bahu avahi mathura Pe na ka bahu avahi mathura taji Jo vah unahi suhat udho Then tell him this, that we will sit and watch the path that he may approach from and keep watching that path day and night for a million lifetimes if we have to. We will never forget him, even if he forgets us. But we want you to tell him that if it pleases him to stay in Mathura, then he should not come here. He should not worry himself. He should not take any pains to leave Mathura and come here. We are just going to stay here and keep waiting for him and remembering him. But we have no expectation from his side. He may remember us, he may not remember us. We don't have any demand. He may come, he may not come. There's no demand from our side. All we're going to do is keep loving him and keep waiting for him. Joi acharan suhat unahi bas Soi hamare man bhat udho. Udho, whatever makes him happy is what makes us happy. So, whatever he wants to do, we have no objection. If it makes him happy, we are truly happy for him to be happy. Sada kripalu raho bhal virahini Sada kripalu raho bhal virahini Pave raha muskat udho we are happy to remain virahinis. We are happy to remain in this state of longing for Him forever, if need be, as long as it keeps a smile on His face. As long as He has a smile on His face, we are happy. So this tenderness and selflessness of the gopis' feelings was such that it made Shri Krishna state, say to them, Naparayeham niravadya sanyujam Svasadhukrityam vibudhayushapiva Bhagavatam Gopis, even if I spent 
60,000 lifetimes, I couldn't repay the debt of your selfless love to me. These gopis' foot dust was sought after by Uddho himself, the topmost jnani saint of that time, when he returned to Mathura. And Sri Krishna had that wry smile on his face that, Kyo uh, Uddho, kya hal hai? How is your meeting with the gopis? Did you give them proper knowledge? <laughs> Uddho says, oh yeah, I did for sure. I left all of my knowledge there with them and <laughs> surrendered at their feet. I threw all my knowledge in Yamuna River. And he had a request from Sri Krishna. Asa maho charan renu jushamahansyam Vrindavane kimapi gul malatau shadhi naam Yadustya jan svajan marya pathancha hitva Bhe jur mukund padavim shruti mrig shruti bhirvi mrigyam Bhagavatam he says, Shri Krishna, please let me be born as any kind of flowering plant or creeper in Vrindavan. Why? So that when the gopis walk by and their foot dust goes up in the air, some of it will fall on me. That foot dust is being sought after by the Vedas, yet it is even unavailable to them. Such is the height of these gopis. Even Brahma says, Shashti Varsha Sahasrani Maya Taptam Tapa Pura Nanda Gopabraja Strinam Padare Nupalabdhaye Tathapi Namaya Prapta Stasam Vai Padare Nava Veda Vyasji writes that uh, Brahma is saying, I did severe austerities ghor tapasya for thousands sixty thousand celestial years in order to receive to qualify to receive the foot dust of the gopis he's not even asking for the status of the gopis he's asking for the foot dust of the gopis yet he failed to receive it such is the height of those gopis but we can also reach to that height. That is the greatness. That that thing which is even desired by Bhagwan Shiv. When Maharas happened, Shri Krishna announced the beginning of Maharas by playing on his flute. But only those who were qualified to hear it actually heard the sound of the flute. So only the gopis heard it and they came to join in Maharas. But Bhagwan Shiv and Parvati on Kailash abode also heard it and came running with a desire to receive that ras of Maharas which is only available to those Samartharati Madhurya Bhav gopis. So Parvati, since she already looks like a gopi, she entered directly but Shivji in his haste came in his normal attire and he was stopped by the gopis. That, oh Babaji, where do you think you're going dressed like that? coming in the middle of Maharas where there's only gopis allowed. So he said, oh, please just ask your queen, Radharani, ask her if I can also take part. So Radha granted his request as long as he also took the form of a gopi. So he did. And that form of Bhagwan Shiv is called Gopeshwar Mahadev. So he came and he joined in Maharas as well. So imagine that thing which is desired even by Bhagwan Shiv, by Mahalakshmi, that is also available to the souls if they have the correct understanding. We can also adopt this Madhurya Bhav style of devotion to God and love God in that way, love Shri Krishna in that way. Then when our heart is fully purified, we will also receive that same status. We will become a gopi. Fear not, men. Naivastri napumaneshu. 
Shvetashvatara Upanishad says the soul has no gender. So according to your bhao, how you want to relate with God, you can be his sakha, you can be a gopi, you can be his father, you can be his mother, it's totally up to you. Souls have been born as men and women uncountable times. We've all been born as men and women. So we all have all those past sanskars. Thus we can also reach inside and adopt that madhurya bhav, whether we're a man or a woman. So if you want to attain that topmost state of premanan, you would adopt this madhurya bhav form of worship, which also gives you the ability or the freedom to move between the different bhav. If you feel like thinking of Shri Krishna with Vatsalya Bhav one day, that's fine. Sakya Bhav another day, it's fine because you're a Madhurya Bhav devotee. So this concludes the explanation of the third shart. The first being that we have to love God selflessly, we shouldn't, meaning we shouldn't ask Him for any material thing, nor should we ask Him for liberation. The second shart, the second condition of bhakti is that bhakti is independent, so it need not be supplemented by the affiliation of any other spiritual practice or path. Bhakti itself is enough. And this was the third condition, that we should not try to worship God, but instead we should try to love God, develop a loving relationship with Him in our mind according to these bhao, which I described to you. Our scriptures tell us one more very important condition. Tameva viditvati mrityumeti nanya pantha vidyate yanaya. Shvetashvatra Upanishad says only by knowing God can you cross this ocean of maya, this ocean of birth and death. Gita says, Tameva sharanam gacha sarvabhavena bharata. Surrender to God only. See this word eva means only in English or he in Hindi. Surrender to God only. Ma meva ye prapadyante maya metam tarantite gita. Shri Krishna says, Those who surrender to me only with my grace, they cross over maya. This condition is called the condition of ananyata. Anan, we must become ananya. Ananya means no other. Anya means other. Ananya, no other. No other but Shri Krishna. No other but God. In other words, our mind should be a hundred percent attached to God. Our mind should be a hundred percent surrendered to God. This ananyata is mentioned. The word ananya comes at many, many places in the Gita. Ananyash chintayanto mam ye jana. Paryupasate tesham nityabhi uktanam yoga kshemam vahamyam. Those who are ananya to me, who have their mind only attached to me and nowhere else, for them I take their full responsibility. Bhaktyatvananyaya shakya ahamevam vidhor juna. Arjun, this divine vision of me which you have received. It is not attainable through any other means except ananya bhakti. You must become ananya. Ananye naiva yogena mam dhyayanta upasate. Shri Krishna says, those who meditate on me and who love me wholeheartedly with ananyata, for them I quickly take them across this ocean of maya. In the Bhagavatam, 
Shri Krishna says, Ma me kameva sharana. He says, Ma me kam evam sharanam. Surrender to me only. And then again he says only. Ma me kam means only to me. And then he says evam again. <laughs> Just driving the point home. Ek bharo so ek bal ek aas vishwas. Tulsidas ji says we should have one hope, one place where we're dependent only on Bhagwan. Anya shrayanam tyago nanyata. Narad Bhakti Darshan. Narad ji says leaving the hope of all others and only depending upon Bhagwan, this is ananyata. This is a very important condition which if we are unable to fulfill, we won't succeed in becoming God-realized. This is something that many people don't know. See, we come to the mandir and we say, Tvameva mata chapita tvameva ityadi. Oh God, you alone are my mother. You alone are my father. Tvameva. See, eva comes there. We say the words, but what's in our heart? Oh God, I really love my mother at home. And I'm more attached to her than I am to you. So I can say you also are my mother. I can't say you only are my mother. We could say Twamapi Mata. We can't say Twameva Mata. Api means Bhi. You also are my mother. So we don't really feel that you only are mine. That's the that's the gist of it. When someone truly feels in their heart, Shri Krishna, you only are mine. That is ananyata. Here someone may question that why is Shri Krishna so demanding? No one in the world is this demanding. Does your father say to you, love only me and don't love your mother? <laughs> no, we keep everybody in our heart, right? We love our father, our mother, our spouse, our children, our grandparents, our friends. We're allowed to love so many people in this world. Why is Shri Krishna saying, I alone am yours? So there's a deep secret behind this, and I'll explain that to you tomorrow. Bhuliye Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai.